Let's spend a minute or two on a story that broke late last week. And this is not one of those stories that really moves stocks in any significant way, but it does move the landscape of an industry. And in this case, we're talking about the entertainment industry and more specifically streaming music. And that is the announcement that Apple Music is now going to be available on Amazon Echo devices. Yeah. And I'm curious what you think about this because anytime there's a partnership, any kind of a deal, there's one of the ways to think about it is was is sort of who are the winners and losers? Are are they both winners? That sort of thing. I'm not. I haven't really decided where I come down on this. Except I I think this is a win for anyone who believes that smart speakers are growing as an industry and will continue to grow because it I don't look at this necessarily as a big win for Amazon or a big loss for Apple although I do think it is a slight win for Amazon and maybe maybe not a loss for Apple but certainly an admission that HomePod which is their smart speaker those things aren't flying off the shelf. Yeah, I think that's it. You got to take the wins and losses in context. It's not something where Apple's going to be going out of business, but I think this does this is a clear sign of a, of a couple of things, right? I think it makes a lot of sense. I really do applaud Apple uh, for seeing the forest for the trees here and in recognizing that I mean, if you don't own an Apple device, then there's really no incentive to use Apple Music. Now, you may say, well, half the country owns an Apple device, and you would be right. Yeah, I mean, basically half the country here has an iPhone, but but Android is the operating system um, around the world. I mean, that is the the operating system that dominates the landscape uh, globally. And so, from that perspective, I mean, thinking outside of our domestic box here, so to speak, Apple Music has a lot of hurdles to clear, and that's why Spotify, I think, has done so well for so long. Uh, so, to me, we've seen uh, Apple. Looking to make this move towards becoming more of a services company, and they're not going to be reporting units sold uh, when it comes to hardware going forward. On the flip side, they are going to give us more transparency into the costs involved with building out that services business, and I think that'll be really helpful. And so, for me, uh, this is a definite sign. This is a sure sign that HomePod is not flying off the shelves. I mean, I don't know anyone personally who has one. Um, I had a hard time ever making the leap that that the masses would be going out to buy one because it's it's priced at a level where you can't even really have it in the same conversation with an Amazon Echo or Google uh, Home, and and so there are going to be plenty of Apple fanatics that want to have a HomePod. Because they want a premium speaker, but but frankly, if if you want a premium speaker, I mean, I, I think Bose has a pretty pretty good brand uh, out Sonos there as well, as well. and Sonos uh, too. So uh, to me, yeah, it's probably an implicit admission that HomePod isn't really working out so well. Not a big surprise. I don't think this is anything that moves the needle for either company. I think this is something that uh, people who have Apple Music, it's one more way for them to get it. Uh, speaking as someone who has a few Echo devices in the home, along with an iPhone in my pocket, I don't use Apple Music. I can't imagine I ever will. And so, I, I think, generally speaking, this is less about acquisition and more about engagement and retention of those who do uh, have Apple Music here domestically. And as you said, they're not going out of business. They're still attempting to sell the home pods. It does, however, seem like this is one more step towards the bets that, or I shouldn't say the bets, the investments that Apple is making in Apple Music. In you look at they did with Beats. Um, there are numerous reports in sort of trade publications that Apple is in talks with iHeartMedia, which is the largest broadcast radio company in America, about possibly either making an investment or just flat out acquiring iHeartMedia. Yeah. So they they do appear to be looking to build out that ecosystem even more. Yeah, and I mean if you if you want to be a services company and, and by services I mean distributing media content, then you want as as big of an audience as you can possibly have. And that means that you have to cross platforms. Uh, because if you are going to just maintain that that walled garden, so to speak, then you're going to do fine here domestically. Again, you've got half the country's attention. Um, I don't know that you're really ever going to get much more than that. And, and globally, clearly, 
uh, you're not going to ever come close to that. And so, if you want to be a services company and you want that to become a bigger part of the business, then you've got to reach out to as many partners as you can. And Amazon's a great partner. I mean, Apple's a great partner too. I love to see two companies like this come together. I'm a big fan of Tim Cook's and and Jeff Bezos, and to see these two companies doing stuff like this, I, I hope we see them doing more together because I think ultimately consumers can only win.